<clears throat> okay, we are ready to begin with our news conference for uh, NC State. Um, coach brought DJ Horn, Casey Morsell, and DJ Burns. Okay, we will begin with a uh, question for Coach and then go to our three student athletes, excuse them, come back at the end with Coach. Who wants to go first for Coach Keats? Okay, I think we have a hand here on the aisle on your left, Coach, right here. Uh, Coach, John Budner, Marquette Hoops. I just wanted to ask about at halftime what the outlook was. I mean, we watched Marquette all year drop behind in the first half and come back and dominate in the second half to win or almost beat Purdue, but you really never let them get, back, get it back to single possession. Was there a key coming out of the half, having dominated, you felt to keeping them down? You know, we thought that uh, if we could defend the three-point line, obviously that would give us our best opportunity to win. We talked about at halftime uh, playing it similar to a scrimmage. We'd won the first half by 13, and we wanted to talk about playing it 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, I thought we did a good job. You know, the difference in the game is, you know, when, when you can defend teams and, you know, you look at Joplin who can really shoot the ball. He was 0 for 7. They were 4 for 31 from the three-point line, which that's an incredible weapon for those guys. And so I thought when we defended the three-point line, that made a huge difference. And, uh, and then offensively, I just thought we really shared the ball. We did some good things. Um, turned it over a little bit more than I wanted to. But when you get 14 assists on 26 made field goals, that's a good night. Uh, three guys up here, older gentlemen, uh, really carried us. Um, when we needed baskets, I can think back of, you know, uh, when they made big baskets. DJ Burns had his um, career high in assists with seven. Um, you know, obviously they did a good job of taking him away, but he became a very efficient passer. I think Casey made a big shot. DJ Horn made big shots. And so, you know, we just relied on our experience and, and our, on our defense. Okay, let's go to questions for the three guys, and we will come back to Coach. I think the – we have a question here on this uh, left side in the back. Hi, um, for all of you players, what has been your favorite memory so far this tournament off of the court? Uh, DJ Horn, we'll start with that with you. Uh, I would just say building the uh, building the chemistry and the relationships that I know um, this success that we found late in our season will you know carry over for the rest of my life. Casey, oh man, I would just say uh, proving everyone wrong. Um, you know, going into every game, I mean, we're pretty much the underdogs. And uh, just, you know, we, we have that conversation heading into every game about trying to embrace, um, you know, everyone doubting us and uh, just proving everyone wrong and going into the locker room and celebrating. And DJ? Uh, as far as off the court moments, I would have to say um, probably today um, at pregame meal, those guys are pretty funny. They kept it light when, you know, it got a little tense. Okay, next question again here on the left toward the front. Brett Friedlander, SaturdayRoad.com. Casey, um, Tyler Kolick is an elite scorer and an elite passer. Uh, he got his points today, but it seemed like you really kind of uh, denied him getting the ball to his teammates. Was that the plan or that just something that kind of happened? Yeah, um, you know, he's, uh, you know, they need him to get going in order for them to be very successful. And, you know, he had a, a pretty good storm night, but uh, trying to, hold him below his assist average um, was something that uh, at least tried to um, prioritize. Let's move toward the right now for the next question. Uh, Chris Vanini, The Athletic for DJ. Uh, after the game, you guys came over to the fans and kind of gave everybody a shrug. Um, what, what was that feeling like, and could you ever imagine this, you know, two weeks ago? Oh, man. Um, if you let me tell it, I imagined it way back in, you know, October. But, um, yeah, if it's, it was just, you know, the why not us thing, you know, we're going to keep that going. You know, we get a lot of disrespect. People still don't think we're supposed to be here, that we're going to go further, but um, we're going to keep trying to crash the party. I think we have a question on Zoom. Yes, we have a question from Dan. Dan, if you would unmute yourself and then state your name and affiliation and then go ahead and ask your question. Yep, Dan Tortora, we call DT.com. For each of the student athletes, just – what you can say about the ACC playing in the conference, it's gotten a lot of disrespect, but now we're seeing at least two teams in the Elite Eight from the conference. Just what the level of competition was like and your thoughts on the conference and how it prepared you for this. Let's start with DJ Burns and then come back toward me. Uh, I think that the ACC is one of 
the best conferences, if not the best conference. And, um, you know, we I feel like, you know, we're not the only team that took it with the level of disrespect, and um, that's why we're all fighting now. Casey? Yeah, I agree. It 100% prepares you, um, even from a physicality standpoint. Um, you know, we were – we're prepared um, just for um, a lot of different things that teams throw at us, it, whether it be um, super fast, super slow, um, you know, and that's kind of what has been a major key for us to adapt um, with, with different things that the game presents. And DJ? Yeah, I agree as well. Uh, the ACC is a great um, conference, and um, I just believe that, you know, we come into the arena, put our pants on the same way they put their pants on. So, uh, like I said from the jump, why not us? Closing questions for our student athletes, and I'll go on the back to, on the right. Thank you very much. Steve Foster, ESPN San Antonio. When I was a little kid, y'all made me cry because you beat the University of Houston. Has your coach now given you any background about that game that happened about 40 years ago and the fact that that matchup could happen again on Sunday? Anybody you want to answer that? I can answer it, no. <laughs> no, because we, we, we take one game at a time. It's two great teams that's going to play here in a little bit, and we don't know who's going to win the game. Would you give them some background? Possibly. You know, but some of the conversations that I have, you guys are not privy to. That's why we're here. Anything else for the student athletes? We'll take one last question. Okay, right here. Left side, in the middle. Skyler Dixon with the AP. Casey, I'm going to try that same question a little differently. You've been here a little longer. It is starting to look a lot like 1983. How aware are you of the history of the program and, and that it is starting to kind of dovetail like that? Oh, yeah, I'm fully aware. Um, you know, we, we pay homage to that team and that group um, all throughout the year. And, um, you know, those guys have, have, you know, have been valuable to us by coming back, giving us feedback, giving us different things that – we could do to be better. So we definitely appreciate them, and um, we honor them just by going out and trying to win. OK, DJ, DJ, and Casey, we'll let you go back to the locker room, which uh, is still open if people need to get more comments from the three guys, as well as the Wolfpack uh, student athletes. Congratulations on your victory, and we will see you tomorrow afternoon, guys. Uh -huh. Questions now for Coach Keats. And I believe we have one right up front here, left side. Kevin, uh, sundown was just after the, f the first TV timeout of the second half. Understanding that, how impressive was what Mo did tonight? I mean, he's, I mean, you think about this run. I mean, he has been so impressive. I mean, you just, you know, what happens is when good players start getting great stats, you don't even realize they have it until the end of the game. Like, I never knew he had 15 rebounds. I mean, he's been so valuable, double doubles and, you know, playing great defense. And we're asking so much of him. Uh, I'm proud of him. Um, he has stayed true to his religion. He stayed true to our basketball team. And we're talking about a young man that gives us everything every time he steps on the court. Next question, again, here on the left, in the middle. Scott Dixon with the AP. Kevin, again, similarly along the 83 thing, I know you want to, it doesn't want to be a big history lesson, but how aware – have you been of that as this run has continued, and, and what will those conversations be like over the next couple of days? Yeah, I mean, I think every team has to, you know, create their own path. And our 83 team, not only our 83, our 74 team has been tremendous. Um, you know, they, they've, been, they've been big brothers, uncles, uh, maybe even some of them granddads to a couple of our kids, uh, been great. Uh, but, you know, we, we talk about, we don't have to talk about that history now because we celebrated the entire time. It's been talked about since I've been here and it's going to be talked about, you know, as long as we ever going to remember. So it's not one of those things where we got to point to it and say, here's what happened in 83, here's what happened in 74. We talk about the great David Thompson, you know, obviously had a statue, you know, uh, unveiled for him this year. So th those guys are always around. So it won't be the conversations about, hey, by the way, this is what happened. Uh, it'll be more so, hey, your big brothers, your uncles, this is what they've done before, and you know because we've celebrated it the entire time. Coach, we'll go to your right now. Uh, Chris Vanito with The Athletic. Uh, DJ's second foul that got overturned after the review, what was your understanding of what happened? Hey, hey, I'm so glad they did that. You know, we're a pressing team, and we trap all the time, and every time they, he was in the cylinder, he was too close to him, and so it's a new rule. 
that we get called all the time because we trap. And basically, they called him in the cylinder, meaning he was too close. And we were doing all of this. I'm just glad they went to the monitor. It's the right call. Any call that went our way was the right call tonight. And how big was it? Did you I think it was big. I think it was a huge call, but it was the right call. Other questions now for Coach? I don't think I see any hands. None? Okay, Coach, Thanks, congratulations. Guys. Thank you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow as well. Thank you.